So in this video, we're going to be talking about the Aegean world and how that takes shape uh, in ancient times. The um, Aegean is situated in a world of water. One of the things that is um, a little counterintuitive for modern folks is that uh, we tend to think about the world in terms of land masses and nation states that are defined by blocks of territory on land. But the ancient peoples tend to think about the world in terms of water. They tend to think about the world in terms of, of large bodies of water that um, that, uh, that civilizations and communities are situated around great rivers and great expanses of lakes, oceans, and seas. And one of the main reasons for this is that so water is, is by far the primary means of transportation in the ancient world. Um, travel over land is much more difficult. It's uh, difficult geographically, it's difficult um, in terms of lack of resources, and in some cases it's difficult in terms of, of hostile peoples and, and hostile terrain, um, you know, uh, uh, unbridged rivers and, and this kind of thing. Uh, the ancient world is accustomed to moving um, uh, cargo and goods and peoples and ideas uh, uh, by water. And so the, uh, the, the world that we're going to be dealing with is the world of the Eastern Mediterranean and the world of the uh, Aegean. Uh, centering on the Mediterranean Sea itself, the sea that is uh, named as the center of the world, um, the Aegean Sea, which, um, which uh, uh, it connects with it, and uh, to a certain extent the Black Sea, which is um, the, uh, the, the land of, of, of promise, the land of, of, of um, you know, rich resources, that uh, become um, increasingly important to the uh, to the competitive vitality um, and and wealth of the peoples of the Aegean world. Um, as you look at the uh, at the Aegean world, and this is really this is this is a, a, a an area that is focused on the uh, the sea and and the lands. Uh, are around it, and the, the peoples are, are of it, and uh, you get the, the, the deep impression of, of, a, of a land of islands. This is true not merely of um, the islands themselves, but if you look at the, the land masses around them, they are riven with, the, with mountains and valleys. Uh, the, the peoples that live on the, the, the crenellated shorelines um, and uh, uh, inland in, the, in the, the narrow valleys between the mountains are uh, just as, as insular as the people that live on the islands themselves. This is a, a place where people develop um, communities that, that, that thrive on, on, on an individual identity and an individual purpose, a, a, a purpose and, and, and vision and, and, and sense of, of identity that, that bonds a community together. Um, and uh, and uh, this is a vital factor in understanding how the uh, how the, the Aegean world develops once the Greeks come along. It becomes uh, um, one of the things that, that fundamentally characterizes them. All right, so the the um, the, the lands of the Aegean world. Uh, surround the Aegean Sea. Uh, to the west is the Greek mainland, um, and the uh, the Balkan mountains, and and uh, march straight down the uh, Greek mainland and uh, arrive in the Peloponnese, which is the the large um, uh, peninsular landmass which is uh, attached to the Greek mainland. Uh, at the southern end of the Aegean is the 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 massive island of Crete. And to the east is the land that is now called Turkey. 
uh, we can't really call it Turkey in ancient history because uh, there were no Turks in the ancient world. Uh, the Turks do not arrive until the Middle Ages, and so uh, we tend to use either the Greek term for this land, Anatolia, or the Roman term, which is Asia Minor. And since this is uh, this is the uh, the Greek course, let's go ahead and use Anatolia. Uh, it's uh, it's a, it's a great word, and it's also evocative and poetic. It uh, it uh, has reference to the land of the rising sun. And to the north, uh, the the land of Thrace. This is uh, the Balkans, uh, Southeast Europe, and. Um, uh, beyond the uh, uh, where uh, where Thrace and Anatolia connect, this is the 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 um, this is not only where Europe meets uh, Asia, uh, a, a, uh, a a crossroads that becomes increasingly important over the period of ancient history. Uh, but uh, as I said, uh, what's really important here is not the land but the water. This is the place where the uh, the Aegean Sea meets the Black Sea, and in point of fact, the the narrow passage between the Black Sea and the Aegean Sea, the Bosporus, this is the only outlet from the Black Sea. So, uh, control over this territory, uh, control over this passage, um, it has a great deal to do with control over the the commerce and and. Uh, and, uh, and and capacity of the Black Sea. And so as the, the, the vast resources of, of the territories around the Black Sea become more and more important, uh, you know, timber and, and grain and, uh, and fur and, and all sorts of other resources, uh, control over the, the Northeast Aegean, control over the passage of the Bosporus becomes, uh, you know, uh, economically crucial. And this remains true throughout the ancient era and uh, well into modern times. So the, the control over the Bosporus uh, is one of the things that leads into um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the rise of, of Russia as a world power and, and uh, is even a factor in the emergence of World War I. But anyway, returning to the ancient era, uh, so... Uh, um, the, part of the point of this is that the geography of the Aegean world helps to determine the character of the cultures of the people that live there. Geography is a vital factor in shaping um, people and nations and cultures and societies. And so the, the, the fact that the Aegean world is a world of islands, not only of literal islands, but figurative islands, uh, um, peoples that uh, fend for themselves and, and, and call upon their own resources in order to survive in the, in the, the valleys between the, the mountains and, and ridges of Greece. Um, this is one of the things that characterizes this, uh, this, this community. Uh, as uh, communities emerge, they tend to be um, focused on um, defendable positions and uh, relatively isolated uh, so that um, so for example here we're looking at the Acropolis of Athens uh, uh, and uh, atop this is a citadel that can be used as a place of refuge in time of need uh, um, and otherwise as a place of, of, um, of temples and, and, and ceremony and the people live in the in the area around it, uh, in a way that that very much mimics the the natural defensibility of the islands of the Aegean. All right, so let's take a quick look at uh, some of the places that become uh, important settlements of the Aegean world over time. Uh, so, you know, one of the most important uh, cities that emerges over Greek history is the city of Athens, and uh, this is in a territory called Attica. Uh, the other 
you know, a tremendously famous city of the of the Greek world that emerges later on is called Sparta, and uh, this is a place called Laconia. Um, a few other um, tremendously important cities include Thebes, which is in uh, Boeotia, and Corinth, which is uh, on the uh, isthmus that separates the uh, the Adriatic from the Aegean. Uh, to the north of this, uh, the, the heartland of the uh, of the Greek mainland is Thessaly. Beyond that is uh, is uh, is verging into barbarian territory, uh, and among these are places like Macedon, where the people are influenced by the Greeks but have their own traditions and customs, which are, as we'll see eventually, um, considerably um, divergent from the Greeks themselves. Um, in Anatolia, there are also um, ancient settlements there. Uh, one of the most famous of these is Sardis. Um, in the northern area of the Aegean is a, uh, a very difficult to uh, navigate uh, territory called Chalcadike, um, the, uh, the fingers that uh, project outward from the, uh, the mainland of, the, the, of, the, of, of northern Aegean. And this is... Uh, uh, this is uh, this is a reminder that one of the things that's characteristic of of, of sea travel in this period is that um, the, is that the vessels tend to stay as close to the coast as possible. Uh, the uh, the vessels that move um, um, that that move cargo and people in the ancient world tend not to be very large. Tend not to be built to withstand uh, the the tumult of the the center of the sea, uh, but rather are um, are designed to hug the coastline as much as possible. And so the passage of the northern Aegean is uh, is tremendously tricky. Uh, is difficult to weather these peninsula, and so this becomes uh, a factor commercially. It becomes a factor um, militarily as well later on, and so Chalcidice becomes important to control in certain periods of the history of the Aegean. To the south, of course, is Crete, as I mentioned, and then there are a number of uh, other islands that uh, become prominent uh, uh, culturally for other reasons: Lesbos, uh, Chios, Naxos. Samnos and Rhodes. Um, one of the things that uh, characterizes this region in general of the of you know southern Europe and uh, you know the Mediterranean area is uh, is how it affects agriculture, and so this is an area that uh, is uh, is good for growing uh, uh, certain types of things. It's good for grain. Uh, but uh, part of the problem is that uh, there's not a lot of, of arable land. There's not a lot of, uh, of wide open spaces in order to grow lots of, of, of wheat and other grains. Uh, the, um, the, the, the soil of the Greek mainland uh, is, uh, is fertile only to a, a relatively limited extent and in some places less so than others. Uh, and so, uh, certain other crops that do well on, on you know, the sides of hills and, and ridges and, and so forth, like, um, you know, like olive trees, and uh, as we're seeing here, the harvesting of olives, and uh, other kinds of of crops that do well in this kind of climate, including grapes, become important not just for food, but for um, exports. Uh, it isn't all that terribly long be before people who settle in the Aegean world realize that uh, olive oil is a tremendously useful uh, um, uh, uh, export commodity, as well as, of course, what can be done with uh, grapes, especially once they've been fermented. Uh, of course, a, 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 a people that lives very much amongst islands is going to also be interested in fish and uh, this kind of thing. But, um, you know, fish is, is not the, the center of the, of the Greek economy or the Greek, um, um, uh, or the Greek um, uh, um, you know, tradition in terms of food. Uh, the, um, the the Greeks still um, center their agriculture as much as they can on what can be harvested from the soil. 
Uh, in earliest times in the Greek world, uh, the, in the, the Neolithic period uh, and uh, during the agricultural revolu revolution, uh, the, the settlements of the Aegean world tend to be, uh, uh, tend to be well ordered and clustered together, often uh, built with walls around them to defend against uh, you know, uh, you know, roving bands of peoples and, and, uh, and, and other kinds of things. Um, and so they uh, they create uh, tight communities to uh, for self protection, and um, and uh, uh, go out to their to their farms and and groves as needed. It, uh, to a great extent, these uh, these Neolithic settlements involve peoples that uh, have uh, are relatively on an, an even footing uh, you'll notice in this image that uh, the houses are all uh, relatively similar and uh, in in size and and uh, and prominence uh, these uh, communities tend to um, uh, tend to work together and uh, and and value the standing of 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 anybody who um, is uh, is is in control of property. The earliest settlements in this part of the world uh, uh, reach back into the mists of of the prehistoric era, uh, and uh, in particular, even the more advanced of the earliest civilizations we know precious little about. And this includes the Cycladic peoples that settle on the uh, the Cycladic islands uh, to the south of of um, of where Athens would one day be. Uh, even the Minoans that uh, that rise uh, a thousand years or so later, we know uh, shockingly little about for the main reason that uh, a we have uh, very limited um, relics from the Minoan civilization, and, and and crucially, we haven't deciphered their language or their writing. The Mycenaeans who come along later and supplants the Minoans and other inhabitants of the Aegeans, we know much more about. These are the ancestors of the Greeks. Uh, and um, on the other side of the Aegean are, you know, settlings of, of Anatolian peoples who uh, include the Trojans who would one day be the rivals of the Mycenaeans. For the Cycladic people, the uh, one of the earliest uh, uh, prehistoric settlements in the Aegean, we have um, mostly these uh, these kinds of of remnants that are you know mute in a way that is uh, strikingly literal. These are figures that have uh, no eyes, no mouth, and and look at their body language. The body language of these figurines is 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 closed in uh, in terms of their arms and and um, even you know as much of an expression as you can get from a, a face with almost no features. Um, and yet, there's something you know surprisingly uh, evocative about them, and uh, the uh, we do know that uh, despite being presented without mouths and without eyes, they are uh, you know they have expression. They uh, it, it is known to them the the importance of 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 the artistic expression of ideas as a means of, 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 of sharing a culture, of sharing a society, and, and of presenting a path for, uh, for advancing. And so uh, we'll, uh, we'll proceed with the Minoans and the Mycenaeans in the other videos, and that's that.